Welcome back to Channel Water. Today I want to give you glasses. Glasses that once you put them on, the only thing that you can see is water. Can you imagine what the world would look like if you could only see water? Inside of a tree, grass, animals, rain, oceans, atmosphere. Just water moving inside of water. We are underwater right now, it just we're a walking ocean, so our density makes us feel like this is just thin air. But we measure how much water is in the air all the time. What we call air is the atmosphere, it's an extension of the ocean. The relationship between the ocean and space is basically the atmosphere. It's this gradient that serves as a buffer zone between the ocean and the cold open space. So when you look at a tree, what do you see? When you look at a building, what do you see? There's always life inside of architecture. The world around us is architecture, structures and buildings built by water, by the soul, by consciousness, building itself a home, on this planet and in the universe. I started with studying architecture. And while I was studying architecture, I looked at trees as built environments. I was trying to figure out who built them and who dwells in them. And that's how I ended up with this focus on water. Through that study, I found out that water is the architect of all plants, animal, people. The nature around us is architecture. We see all the pieces in nature as somewhat individual pieces that are not connected, especially us human beings. We completely disconnect ourselves from the nature around us. But when Darwin came up with the theory of evolution, we could see that this is one tree of life, that there's one movement of life through matter that is this architecture we talk about. So there's no separation in nature, the opposite. This is just one system that is evolving all the time. But what we see is evolution of architecture, evolution of structures and buildings, not necessarily evolution of consciousness. Consciousness is that is something that just exists. And if you're confused about the terms, you can say consciousness, the soul, the spirit, that's all one thing. And that consciousness is aware of its surrounding. That's what awareness is, to be aware of your surrounding and react to it. So we see that consciousness is building homes, houses, structures, for it to dwell in, in this universe. So all the structures we know of, plants, animal, people, they're all structures of water. They serve water, and water is the one that's dwelling in them. And when you study the systems inside of plants, animal, people, you see that. You see that the transportation, the housing, everything is made by water for water. You will never find life without water. That is a fact. In the past, we looked for life inside of a dead body. We tried to find what is the thing that is alive? What's the thing that continues life? Where is the soul? Where is the spirit inside of a body? So scientists would dissect a dead body, trying to find that one thing. And what did they expect to find? Some kind of a beating heart that never stops beating, or an organ that will just continue on. It was pretty clear that you can't find that one thing that will be visible to your eyes and that you can see as a structure. So some people just decided there is no such thing. There is no soul or spirit that exists in the body. And some people went the other way. The soul is abstract. It's a spirit. It just flies away. It's something that we can't even it's not tangible. We can't touch it, see it, talk about it. 
So then we have these two extremes. There is a soul, there isn't a soul. But none of them actually gives space for the soul to exist in this material world. If you look at a dead body, it's never dead. When somebody dies, we put them into a freezer and then we put it into a box and then we bury it in the ground. If you stay around to look at a dead body and you just leave it on the ground, you will see over time, just like when a baby is made in the stomach, water is pumped into it and it's made inside of water, you will see the water breaks out of the dead body and go back to the cycle of water. The rest of the architecture of the body, the structure, which is not alive in that sense, it's not active, will remain in place. And that's the ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That soil, the dirt you're made out of, is just gonna go back and remain there until water picks it back up and uses it again to build other structures. But there is something in our bodies that never stops moving and always breaks through. Water breaks when we are born and when we die. If you don't stake around to see the water leave the body, how can you claim that you haven't seen life leave the body? When it's very clear that it does. And when it does, it gets absorbed either to plants, animals, groundwater, river, ocean, clouds. As we said before, the cycle of water is the cycle of the soul on this planet. And another interesting fact, which is an answer to many questions we get about does the soul enter the body and when? There is no moment that the body is without a soul. The soul doesn't enter the body, it makes the body. So a baby is made in water, inside of a conscious being. So the soul is not entering a dead body, it doesn't animate a dead body. It is more of a cell splitting itself and continuing. So we don't make life. We just continue life. It's a continuous flow. The flow of water through matter. So the spirit, consciousness, the soul is made inside of itself. It is the soul. It is. It is consciousness that makes a body, makes the mind, makes the brain, makes your... Everything about your body is made by that consciousness if you see it through water. So you can see that there's no moment when something else is happening, because that also won't be logical. We don't have robots out there building bodies and then entering into them. That's a car. A car can be made in a fully automated factory and then you walk into it and you drive it or later on you can make it a self-driving car so you don't even have to drive it in that way it's clear to us and you can see how when something is moving in nature it either is conscious and chooses to move or a conscious being has designed it and put it into movement either way there is somebody that is making something, that's somebody that's building something, and that happens inside of that field of consciousness. There are no structures that are randomly built, and then consciousness finds and enters into them. Those structures are always made by consciousness, for consciousness, inside of that field of consciousness. In this case, water. Now it might be that Water is not what we think it is. It's not matter. It might be that it's more of a field, a field of consciousness, an electric field. It's something else. And that's usually where we miss the point and we miss what is very clear once you understand that water is not matter and water has different properties and different abilities than the rest of matter. Matter maybe has consciousness, 
but it's not active, it's potential. The only active substance that we see moving and building is water, and that's why we focus on that. It's not that we want to take away from matter any qualities it might have, but we just haven't seen it. You can do a test by yourself, leave a rock on the window, leave a glass of water on your window, and let's see what will happen. One will move away, one will stay there forever until you come back and move it again. So that's just the idea of what's active and what's passive. Do you ever wonder how the soul, the spirit, if you think that it is abstract, moves your body? Where is the connection between the spirit, consciousness, and the material world? How is that connection made? Because obviously there's movement in the world. Something is moving something. Where's that moment it touches? Where's that moment that something is touching and moving? Here I believe that water is the place where the touching happens, the moving, the making. And that's why I say that water might be the glove on the hand of consciousness. So consciousness, if you want, you can keep it abstract. But then it comes through the water. That's where it touches. That's where it moves and does. Or water is the thing itself. That is where the, our consciousness dwells. That's where it is. And the same thing, that's what touches, moves. In our bodies, in plants, animals. That's why we made this video, You Are a Walking Ocean, trying to look through the architecture, seeing the water moving, seeing that unified field that is our spirit, the spirit that makes life happen. Nothing around you in this nature, the organic nature, that is built of single cells, they're all alive, nothing is dead. It's all alive and intelligent and conscious. It's just different structures, different architecture, different buildings and dwellings, just like we have, different type of homes, mobile homes, airplanes, to a submarine, to a boat, it doesn't matter. You'll find the same systems inside of them. There'll be a bed, a toilet, a sink, a kitchen. All those things, we find the same thing in nature. All single cells are the same. And the differences is how they get their energy, how they dispose their waste. But life is just this infinite collages of all those different cells. And we are, in that sense, a walking tree. That's what the evolution of architecture did. Instead of staying in one place, being helpless under the elements, you can detach from your roots, and be free-flowing, free-moving to find the food, the energy, the cover from the elements and what you need. We are giants made out of trillions of cells. And those trillions of cells live in singularity through that field of consciousness of water. We have this temporary illusion that I'm an individual right now, but I'm just a cup of water out of the ocean of consciousness. I have this illusion that I'm detached, but it's just me operating this vehicle right now as an astronaut, doing the work we need to do in the material world to ensure the future of water, the independence of water in space. And once you understand what water needs as far as its physical conditions to operate, to be healthy and successful in the universe. It needs certain temperatures. It definitely doesn't like the salt of the ocean, the cold temperature. Everything in the architecture around us and us are buildings that ensure water to be in the perfect temperature it needs to be, with the perfect balances of chemicals and all that that it needs to be. It's all about housing. In a sense, the ocean is homeless. 
and it's not in ideal conditions when it comes to water and it's definitely vulnerable to another ice age being ice frozen in time it's probably the worst thing that can happen to water so our whole body is conscious our whole body like i said we're giants made out of trillions of cells each one of them is conscious it's this fractal of consciousness consciousness operates in many different scales and sizes and they're all communicate connected when you're water you're fully connected to that field and that's why a lot of times when we experience that when we have that what we call oceanic feeling when we are fully connected we feel so um some people say out of body just pure energy it just it just the feeling is so non-material in that sense that it's hard for us to put it in words but it's not energy we're just consciousness and that's important to understand that consciousness uses energy to manipulate matter so you have a triangle of consciousness energy matter and that's the triangle that we work inside of sometimes we have the ability to connect back to the ocean of consciousness and the water in your body is connected to the dna in your body dna is made and used by water it's our cellular internet servers hard drives memory everything is there you can suddenly know and feel everything possible and be back in that field where plants and animals are we will have another video where we talk about what are human beings and what the purpose is and why we are as human beings are disconnected of that field we are recreating that field in a bigger scale but that's something for another video so the goal of this video is to try and open your eyes to a hidden layer that is inside of the architecture around us and just like you walk in a city and you understand what you see you understand that there's roads power lines information lines buildings that there's life inside schools there's all those different functions imagine that you walk in a forest now and the same functions are there too there just some of them are maybe underground through the roots some of them are um inside of the trees inside of the plants inside of the animals but we don't truly understand most of their functions we just assume that there are none not conscious not intelligent that they're not functional but it's the opposite they all carry the same consciousness they just have different functions just like you're not going to try and take a bus and use it for a formula 1 car race just like you're not going to try and take an airplane and convert it into a submarine the functions of those vehicles is very determined and designed specifically to that function and until you understand what is the function there's no room to criticize or judge its intelligence and consciousness or even if it's there or not we know that the nature around us is highly intelligent in its design in its um technology and architecture we're slowly trying to mimic and recreate and understand the world around us nature is very sophisticated in that sense and you can see that if you have a tree when it's growing and when you're building your home completely different it's it's quiet it's not it doesn't pollute its environment it doesn't create all this trash and we will reach that level too within our architecture we will we grow buildings vehicles everything will be in that sense equal to what we see in nature today and that's what i mean when we say it's an evolution of architecture that's what mainly is evolving our technologies our architecture our abilities to express ourselves through matter So that flow of life moving through matter gets better and better in the way that we control the matter and the way we can express ourselves. 
And especially now we see it, as we have our 3D printing and CNC machines, and you start to see how we can really just imagine something and bring it into life in precision that we could never do before. And people are building their own vehicles, their own cars. And you start to see why there's so many designs in nature. Because that's what consciousness does. It, it just, it's creative, it expresses itself. There are so many different movements and characters in nature. And each one of them has a different form and movement. And then you start to see that. You start to see that through the different vehicles we're creating and the different movements we're making. So we see this beautiful dance between consciousness, which is trying to express itself, and the material world, which provides us the building blocks. And those building blocks have shapes and rules and the laws of science, which apply to those building blocks. And the dance between the two create structures. And those structures in them have the imprint of that character, of the movement. But they both inform each other. So within the limitations of matter, we build. And you can see water operates within those two. So when you see the images of faces of water, for example, when you see what water looks like, just pure movement in water, you see the pure expression of it. And it's trying to get back there. It's trying to get to that level of expression where we can build structures that look like that. It's harder to do it here on land. That's why in the ocean you find all this incredible architecture. Just a jellyfish, water moving in water with a very minimal structure. For us, it's something like an inflatable that we'll create when we talk about octopus and, and sharks and dolphins and their intelligence and maybe they have a different DNA or they're aliens and all that, that's not the case. They're just, they're in the field of consciousness. And the freedom they have to express themselves within that field is much greater and more sophisticated. So again, it's evolution of architecture. And it was a big step to step out of the ocean onto land. And now we see the same when we step outside of the atmosphere into space. So again, it feels like we're moving backwards as far as the complexity of those structures that are leaving the atmosphere. But slowly, we're building more and more complexity within that and we're able to express ourselves more. But it's a whole different game now because the environment of space compared to the environment of our atmosphere compared to the environment of the ocean, you can see how we're stepping away and outside of the body of consciousness into the infinite universe. And that is the action of hatching life out into the universe from this egg, from this water world, where we're inside of consciousness and we're stepping out. So this is it for today. I just wanted to comment about the last video, You Are Walking Ocean, and what inspired that video, why we made it. And the idea was really to just give you a glimpse into just the world of water. Um, I really liked that video. I just didn't want to talk or put text over it. I just wanted to leave it, let it be as a visual piece. And I'd rather talk about it here separately for those who are interested. So if you have more questions on the subject, please leave them in the comments and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much.